And that's how you know, right? That that is a gift, that is a talent. It is magnetizing and it's an opportunity for you to have an impact on people that won't feel like work. Hey everybody, welcome back to Journey to Impact. Today my guest is Dr. Helene and I am excited to speak to Dr. Helene. Helene and I have known each other for a long time in many different capacities and our entrepreneurial journeys have been kind of parallel. We're working together and we're having a blast. So I'm really happy she agreed to be on our podcast today. So Dr. Helene, welcome. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here, Janet. Thank you for having me. Well, my pleasure entirely. So we have some great talks, Dr. Helene and I. And so today we're going to share one of our great talks with you. So uh, Helene, we're talking about creating impact in the world. And I have to tell everyone, I feel like you are a powerhouse when it comes to creating impact. You are, oh, you wow. get so much done every day. I don't know how you do it. And it's always, I feel like you always have that, that mission and that impact in mind when you do your work. So I, I am excited to share that with everyone else. So can you tell us a little bit about kind of your personal journey to entrepreneurship? And I think you've been doing it a lot longer than I, I realize and, and how you have used that to create impact. Oh, okay. Yes. So as a matter of fact, I have been doing it for a while. Um, you know how you think to yourself, I have this idea that I can do this. Um, I don't know. Usually it's like a side hustle. <laughs> so when I was an undergrad, and of course this was before everyone had the benefit of having their own laptops and cell phones and all of that sort of thing. Um, I realized that you know, I had something, a sort of talent that folks wanted. And so it was as simple as like helping people to type up their papers. And so, so that's a big help. It was me. huge at the time because everyone did not have a personal computer at all. Um, you know, and it wasn't necessarily because we couldn't all afford them, although that was also true. I mean, it was also the fact that a lot of people just did not have the skill set. It would take them so long to do that. And so anyway, I recognized the problem. I started um, essentially offering to type people's papers for them and um, started charging them to do it because it took a lot of time. And as an undergraduate student, I was already working um, a couple of jobs. I needed the money and um, so began kind of an entrepreneurial journey for me. And from there, I think realizing that um, that small things, small skill sets could kind of help me along. Um, that, that just kind of, I think I put that in the back of my head somewhere because it came back when I was a graduate student. And I uh, thought to myself once again, as I was interacting with other people in my, you know, just my peers, I thought about it and um, was listening to the kind of issues they were having. And, you know, most of those issues at the time were sort of career seeking issues, right? A lot of the people I knew at the time were just beginning their professional careers and they really needed, um, you know, really good looking resumes, cover letters, this sort of thing. That was the first time I actually thought, I'm going to start a business <laughs> and it's going to be a writing services business because I keep meeting people and they keep asking me because I have this kind of English and literature and writing background. They kept asking for my assistance. And so the problem kind of came to me in those kinds of ways too. So entrepreneurship began to kind of grow out of that. That was the first rendition of, um, you know, the actual official business um, doing this kind of work. And then 
you know, as I got further along into my graduate studies, I kind of put it aside because I just didn't have the time. At least I didn't think right. so. And by the way, that wasn't just resumes and cover letters because I realized I was working with a lot of artists. Like I was surrounded by a lot of creatives as well. And they needed representation that was a little bit different. And so I realized that, um, you know, I could, in fact, see them in a way through words that um, they really loved. So I ended up writing bios for mm. certain singers and models and and folks like that. And so it, it, it turned into that sort of thing. But again, I ended up putting it down, um, even though I realized at the time that I definitely this was definitely part of my calling because I really saw myself as connected to both academics and creatives in professional ways. And I knew that I was supposed to elevate them. Um, so fast forward, I end up an academic uh, full-time and um, things move through and change as they always do. Here comes COVID. COVID brings us all back to um, a quiet space of reflection. And I think that's when I realized too that I wanted to do more for people um, directly. And I wanted to impact, I wanted to pick that back up. I wanted to impact people's opportunities. I wanted to see their visions built. I wanted creatives and academics in particular to feel empowered um, not just through their basic documents, but through all of the the bits and pieces of who they are as as creative individuals. I wanted them to manifest all of their gifts and talents. And I felt that for years that had been a calling for me. And I had always been an encourager in that regard. And I could always see more in people <laughs> than they could right. see in themselves. So that journey, that that entrepreneurship journey was always, um, you know, integrated with my identity as a writer, as someone who was um, who was visionary about other people's um, journey, and also just the idea of wanting to support and enliven and help creatives and academics manifest everything God has in them to manifest, honestly. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. I want to unpack a couple of things you said, though, for everyone, because I think they were important. So one thing that I heard was you saw people with a problem mm -hmm. that you had a gift or talent to solve. And that's kind of what got you rolling. It wasn't it wasn't a fancy problem, a big problem, a world encompassing right. problem. Right. It was a it was a, a problem you noted in college and you said, hey, I can help with this. And, and you kept seeing additional problems then mm -hmm. that moved you kind of down your path. So I love that. And I think a lot of entrepreneurial journeys are started because people recognize, I, Hey, I can impact that little problem there. Absolutely. And, and it's weird because I always tell my clients as well, you know, the thing that comes so naturally to us, the thing that seems simple, straightforward, easy. What I tell them is that, you know, this is a part of that set of gifts and talents that are yours and are unique to you, even when it seems like they're no big deal, right? I, I tell them that, you know, these are the things that magnetize. And I say magnetize because they, they draw people to you and you're drawn toward the opportunities to use them. So those problems, they will find you, you know, when, when you have that gift or talent. They, because they become, it's like they become bigger to you um, because the way that they are so obvious or the way that they are so easily solved or addressed to you, even though to other people, it is not easily resolved <laughs> or addressed. Right. That right. problem seems insurmountable, et cetera. But to you, somehow you just begin to think, well, if we just do this, 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 and this, you know, we'll knock that right out. And they are, and they marvel. They think, what, you yeah. can do that? We can do that? And that's how you know 
right? That that is a gift, that is a talent. It is magnetizing and it's an opportunity for you to have an impact on people that won't feel like work, right? <laughs> yes, yes. All right, everyone, like you just you just got the formula to how to find your niche. So yeah. that's how you find out really what your passion, your calling, where all of those meet and there's a market, that's that's your niche. So you just explain that. And I love that. The other thing I wanted to unpack from your original comments was there's a runway to this. Mm. You know, I think we're bombarded these days with, hey, if you do this for two months, you're going to make a million dollars. And that's <laughs> That's not how it works. I mean, we're yeah. talking, I'm not, I don't want to give away years here, but we're not talking <laughs> five years since you were in, in undergrad that no. <laughs> so, so there's a runway and, yeah. and you, you even set it aside for some other things. I have set some of the things I wanted to do aside for some other um, endeavors or just life. And so I appreciate that you pointed out there's a runway here and people need to be patient and understand that you have to, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and that is really hard. It's, it is not easy to be patient on your own journey. It's, it's a great deal simpler for me to say it to clients, you know, like, let's take this one step at a time and let's, Let's sort of, um, you know, unpack this and work our way there and take the proper steps. But I recognize that it's really hard. Um, it's really hard for me because most people who know me know that in my real life, I am 100 miles an hour. So, <laughs> so I can attest to that. So, so I am I, I am empathetic to the feeling of I need to get going right this moment. And that's a good thing. Like, I don't, I don't think that, you know, you want to lose that momentum or that drive. I do think that there's an element of patience involved when it comes to recognizing the season that you're in um, mm -hmm. and recognizing the part of the journey that you're actually on right? As an undergraduate, yes, I could definitely do some sort of basic skill sets and support other people. But, you know, I was on my way to gaining a great deal more in terms of my skill set related to, you know, writing and, um, and critical thinking and just language building, even for myself. So, you know, if I had jumped out there and thought, oh, you know what, I'm just going to start, I'm, I'm not just going to type these things, I'm just going to start, you know, teaching people how to do this right out the gate. I don't think that I had built up the level of confidence that is required, the level of training. You know, I had to recognize that that was a season for me where I could dabble a bit and, you know, learn some things in that entrepreneurial setting, you know, for myself in a way that fit into my life, much more side hustle attitude, right? This is a means to an end kind of um, moment versus, you know, when I was then in graduate school and, you know, already had a degree, maybe even a second degree at the time and, so I felt a bit more confident. I had more training under my belt. I kind of had a more polished approach, right, to doing, um, to living professional life, right? I could right. deal differently. You know, I had a different kind of job, actually um, a little bit more of a, I don't know if it's considered corporate, but I was working in human resources at the time as mm -hmm. well as being a graduate student. And so I was gaining all of these other bits and parts to the knowledge that I would eventually put into place. But again, it went from being a means to an end to a moment or a season where I felt like now this can be an actual business, right? Like now I feel a bit more confident and empowered to step out on this thing. Um, and also I have the, I've, I've established the reputation 
right? Like I, I've yes. established a measure of a reputation, not only with the degrees that I had, but also just among my peers as someone who could do this sort of work. And, um, you know, and that season was a season, but I was in pursuit of something else as well. And the priorities were in place because I wanted the highest degree in my field. That was a priority. I did not want to, you know, sidestep my way out of that and then um, change my trajectory, you know, because I did have a trajectory and established plan for myself. So that patience has to like be connected to your sort of larger priorities. Now, when I got to this space, this different season, um, it took some reflection. It took some you know, sitting with myself, but it also took a change in my environment. You know, my uh, my work life changed, technology changed, you know? And so therefore, not only was it an, an internal change, but there were external changes that signaled a seasonal opportunity. And so for me, establishing my... Um, strongest identity as an entrepreneur in this lane um, happened along that kind of trajectory. Now, I have other entrepreneurial um, pursuits that are not writing services <laughs> oriented, but they play more of a background role. Um, you know, so, you know, there are there are ways in which you can become an entrepreneur and still um, do the sort of foreground working that you do while doing, you know, things that are not really a, a side hustle um, as much as part of a plan. And what I'm talking about is really like the fact that I also have partnerships, um, LLP kinds of uh, entrepreneurial pursuits that are relative to property ownership and management. Um, and so that's a separate thing. But when it comes to that thing that you feel truly called to, you know, there are opportunistic kinds of entrepreneurial goals, right. but then there are callings. There are right. those things that magnetize. And so different trajectories for those, definitely. Well, for sure, I would say you're a person that is, who has side hustles that have side hustles. So your side hustles. <laughs> Not my side, side hustles have side hustles. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, that's what I think. I, I know you and that's what it looks like to me. So <laughs> so thanks for sharing all of that. That is is great information. And I, I think uh, kind of gives people the idea that maybe maybe this season isn't the season to start a business, but but the next one will be. So let's talk about the season you're in with your business, talk about pros for pros, because that's that's really your passion right now. And uh, tell people what the focus is for that business and, and kind of what you do, because it's, it's pretty interesting how you have, your writing talents have manifested into much, much more. Sure, so pros for pros, um, really emerged out of a lot of personal reflection and meditation and prayer. It would seem obvious to someone else maybe that, you know, of course you just pick up the writing services again, but that's not the reason that I did it. Um, you know, when you have a full-time job and you've got a whole family and, you know, just a full house, even a dog, right? Who snores that might be heard in the background. Um, but when you have a lot going on, a lot of busyness, it doesn't necessarily, it, it sometimes feels overwhelming to think about starting another thing. And so when Pros for Pros was born, it was born out of the desire to really be, to really create an impact, to really desire to be able to give more um, and to impact people more. I wanted not just to create another stream of income, though I did want that as well. <laughs> 
but I mean, you have to have, you have to have that to keep it rolling, right? Exactly. It's, you know, but I, but I want to be clear that the center of the motivation was a little bit different, right? Like it really was that kind of itching deep down that itch that kept saying, you know, you're supposed to be doing something more, um, something direct, something connected to people. And so I had to sit in that for a while. And so Pros for Pros um, emerged as a writing services and coaching um, company that is all about helping creatives and academics to multiply and monetize their gifts. Um, People think about it, you know, if I just say it's a writing services organization, if I just say it's about writing, then you only kind of get half the picture. And yes, I do work with organizations to support their um, content and writing goals, right? Whatever that may be, from the smallest things to complete revamps, from, you know, uh, writing really designer emails and things like that yeah. for yeah. high level executives and that sort of thing to right. to actually ghost writing and completely creating um language to match people's ideas and journeys and so um that would be that's definitely one part of it the part that is um perhaps most energizing for me is um, getting to work with people who have a creative vision, something that is itching inside them, something that they know they are supposed to do or build. And it's a vision, right? Like they can, they know it, they can see it. They see some portion of it. My gift, my talent in this area isn't just in the helping people to develop the content. But what I love most is helping them to see more than that. Helping creatives and academics to see beyond themselves and beyond the small thing they're trying to create, to see how that small thing can actually manifest into something more and can create other streams of income for them and can actually change the trajectory for uh, of their lives really, you know, um, can create new opportunities for them. And they begin to see more for themselves and more of an impact that they can make. Um, they begin to see how that vision can not only be built, but can be built out in a way that's sustainable and can actually elevate their ideas to the point of impacting um, a larger number of people um, across multiple avenues and opportunities. And so that's the part that's most exciting to me. Um, I, I love to write and write about people and build bios and, and all those kinds of documents and things like that. But I most, most, most enjoy helping people to see themselves in the way that I believe God sees them. And that is as creative individuals who can do amazing things. So wow. that's pros for pros. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's amazing. And that's a lot. And I agree with you in that I, when I first, I, I know your background, so I know the writing background and all that. So when we first talked about your business, I, I thought it was a writing business, but it is, it is way beyond that. So uh, I can vouch for that. And I think the work you do is, is incredible. And it's very focused. It's very, you, you have, you see it, you, you, you see the path and you know where you're headed. Absolutely. So, yeah. so, <laughs> it was dropped sure. into my lap, honestly. It's not, it, it, it just, it was dropped into my lap through all of that you know, prayer and meditation, it just, it just felt like it just dropped the inspiration for my whole coaching program dropped right into my lap. And, and so I built it out. I built it out. So, so if people are struggling 
with what what do I do in searching the internet for that idea or anything? I, I hear you say, stop, be a little quiet, like just just be quiet, meditate, whatever you like to do that that allows you to kind of let mm -hmm. that creativity flow and those and and it it people are connected to a, a, a greater being than just listen to that and mm -hmm. sit in that rather than uh, Google, what's the best side hustle right. to today? Oh, yes. Because the I feel like the worst thing we can do is just try to figure out what the, the best trend is to jump on. Um, I don't think there's there's nothing wrong with seeing opportunities and taking opportunities, um, taking them up. But I think we have to be more careful about our authenticity when it comes to our vision. The thing that is most motivating is the thing that we are built to do. The thing that comes so naturally to us that it is something that we would we would probably do whether someone was paying us or not. We would probably find a way to be doing that thing, right? Writers yeah. write, you know, they find reasons and ways to write. Artists paint, draw, create, put things together. They do it because it, it gives them something right? Like it does something for them. The same thing goes for people who are amazing administrators, right? They just, they're looking for things to organize. That's know? right. That's right. <laughs> you know, people, people, people to, people to delegate and organize. Yes, people and... to delegate and help people. Like they're just there with the ideas, et cetera. Yep. People who build things with their hands, like they're looking for ways to do it. Usually, it's found in those hobbies. The problem is that people don't always believe that they can monetize those things because they come so naturally, they devalue them. They come so naturally, they seem so simple. They seem so basic that they don't think of them as grandiose enough. Like no one's gonna pay me to do this, right? No one's gonna, no one's going to, think that this little bit of whatever I build is that interesting that they'd want to buy it. It's just a trinket that I that I mess around with. And if you really want to test that hypothesis, you can go on and Google and you can see all of the weird stuff that people have decided to put out there. For sure. Just because. And other people are buying it or they're Fine. asking for those services. Because as a matter of fact, we are actually valuable. The reason you've got that thing in you is that somebody out there really wants it and it's gonna give them joy. It's going to impact their lives. It's going to help them to do something else. And so that is the part. I think when we get into that, um, that's, that sort of spirally rabbit hole behavior of, I just want to figure out what I can sell, you know, or I just want to figure out, you know, what I should do. I always tell people, you have to, you have to get into that quiet space. You really do need to reflect on the things that um, come very naturally to you. You can, you, if it's difficult to get into that space, you really can do some sort of skills assessment. You know, you can tap into programs and software that will help with skills assessment. I personally always encourage people to um, really dig deep into the sacred spaces, to go into that meditation, into that prayer space, to really tap into um, their creativity by way of of a creator. You know, I the way that I think of God, okay, and I know this isn't a sort of religious proselytizing yeah. moment, but this, is, this is my truth. The way that I think about God is through God's creation, through God's creativity. When you look around us and you see the weird stuff swimming and flying and <laughs> crawling around us, all I can do is think it took the most creative mind 
to actually imagine what that would look like. I want to tap into that. I want to tap into that level of creativity that thinks that that creepy, crawly, slithery, whatever, swimmy thing is amazing and beautiful enough yeah. that somebody's going to want to study it. <laughs> you know? right. And it's not cute and it's not, you know, interesting to everyone, but someone is going to be fascinated by it. And I take that allegorically and I think about what is in us. What is in us that is weird maybe to us, you know, or doesn't unique. look like everything else, right? It's unique. It's, it, it's maybe it's so simple. It's very straightforward. Right. It's so natural to us, but somebody needs it. Someone thinks it's mm -hmm. fascinating. Someone thinks it's amazing. And someone's going to need, like need it and want it in order to take them to the next level to help them on their journey. And so I want to see people tapping into that. And I think you do have to go inside to tap into that and even just kind of ask for support to help it manifest and to start paying attention. Because if you open your heart and you open your mind up, the inspiration comes, it comes. It just does. Wow. That's great. I, I love this. Uh, we're going to have to wrap up, but I think you're oh. going to be back for more soon. <laughs> um, but I would like to ask you one last thing. So if somebody's listening, maybe they're in a job they're not loving. Maybe they have had this voice in the background saying, do this, do this or do that, or you could do yeah. this. Or they just are people that want to create some impact in their community and in their lives and, and kind of just make an adjustment. What is your kind of best advice to take that first step and do that? Mm. My best advice. So it really does depend on, you know, the stage a person's in and, and what their um, interests are. But I know that for me, there is always a, uh, a stage of clarification, right? Like there is a moment where you want to sit in the, in, in the idea and you want to think about how and what you really want to do and why you want to do it. I have um, something I put my clients through no matter what the vision is. And um, I call it a personal brand statement because I, I want everything that I build and everything that a client builds to be on a solid foundation. I don't think it's a great idea to plan for, you know, uh, just to do, just to sort of jump out there on something random without thinking about how does this connect to who I am and what I'm about? Because who you are and what you're about will sustain what you're doing. It'll, it'll help with the motivation to continue. So it's super important that you get the clarification for what it is you are really talking about doing and why you want to do it. Um, and I think that helps us to really commit and stay motivated in sustaining the energy it's going to take to build that thing. Right. And then after we kind of have that sense of understanding about what it is I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how it connects to my personal story, in fact, then I can begin the process of planning my way forward. So that's the first step. First step is really clarifying what it is and why it is. Creating a personal brand statement is super helpful. The process itself is reflective. And if anyone on the podcast is interested in this, I do have um, a link we can place in the notes to, for sure. um, yeah, to provide a free resource for getting at that wow. personal brand statement, for getting at what is it that I'm trying to do? Why am I trying to do it? Um, and how, honestly, should I be doing it? That personal brand statement is really powerful. And it also builds into the kind of pitch you're going to need for talking to people about who you are becoming. 
in wow. building well, that vision. So. So thank you for that offer. We will put that in uh, the show notes if you're listening on the podcast or we will put it in the YouTube description if you're watching on YouTube. How can people find you? And if they like what they're hearing today, can they get in touch with you to get some help moving their vision forward? Absolutely. Um, I can be found at my website, pros, P-R-O-S-E, the number four, and P-R-O-S, as in professionals. So prosforpros.com. You can find me there. You can find out more about what I do and how I work. You can also um, see testimonials um, from other clients uh, and the kinds of projects and things that they've uh, done with me and helped. Uh, I've helped them to build. And also you can find a little bit more, uh, find out a little bit more about my background and how I can help. You can also get a free consultation um, if you click on the link in my website, you oh, can also yeah, find yeah. me. <laughs> I was going to say, are you on uh, social? I am. I am. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You can also follow me at Dr. Helene writes. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on TikTok. I mean, I'm everywhere. You can find me on LinkedIn as well, which is where you'll see um, my blog, which is called right now. Um, W-R-I-T-E, right now, the blog, uh, you can find me there at Dr. Helene Wrights. Awesome. That is fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for joining me with our discussion with Dr. Helene and definitely check out her stuff. She's got great resources. And again, look at the description or the show notes to find out more. Please rate and follow this podcast. Give it a review and a follow on our YouTube channel so that we can continue to create great content for you. I'm Janet with Future Ready Consulting, and we want to help you on your journey to impact. And remember, without impact, it doesn't matter. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>